Everyone loves a bargain, but when it comes to solar, going cheap can end up costing you a lot more than you might think. At Artisan Electrics, we've seen it all. Panels installed badly, undersized cables, and systems that never deliver what the installer promised it would. So in this video, I'm laying bare the hidden costs of cheap solar installs, showing you what corners often get cut and how to find the pitfalls when getting a solar quote. So how did we end up here? Well, a lot of installers will call it out for what I think it is, the race to the bottom. There are so many people flooding into the solar market right now and have been over the last couple of years. And that has resulted in a ton of competition. Now I say competition in inverted commas, competition is good for any market, right? And it can drive prices down. But when there's too much competition resulting in undercutting upon undercutting upon undercutting, it can get really dangerous, especially in an industry that safety should be a priority because it often results in installers quoting lower than they really should in order to win a job. But with razor thin margins or even doing installs at a loss just to keep their business rolling, they're forced to cut corners in order to get the job done without losing too much money or to make a tiny profit. And there lies the danger because when corners are cut on a solar installation, it can result not just in a system that doesn't work properly, but in a system that is frankly downright dangerous. Now you might say, but I do cheap installs and my installs are good. Well, that might be the case. I'm sure there are a few installers out there who do installs for a cheap price and do a good job or take care in what they do. But in general, it takes a lot of planning, preparation, design work, certification, approvals to do a job like this. It's not your typical one man band who's gonna be doing a solar install like this. It takes a big setup, which means that there are overheads involved to run a company profitably and do high quality solar work. That being said, there are some huge players out there in the industry that are throwing in rock bottom prices for solar installs as well. But they often use subcontractors and they don't actually have their own teams of installers. So that means that they can be a bit more generous in their own margins, but it's the installer's margins that are really, really tight and therefore the same result poor quality solar installs. Now you might think I'm just scaremongering or making this stuff up, but let me tell you, we've filmed some real world examples of this stuff happening. One particular customer I had in mind got completely abandoned by their installer at the end of the install to the point where he had to take down the scaffolding himself because he couldn't get them back to simply remove the scaffolding. The system never worked as it should have and we ended up having to come back to help him get it all set up properly. And there's a video up here where we went into full depth on that particular situation and what happened. There was another customer who had a grant funded installation done and the installation was just shockingly installed and it never worked to full performance to the point where the customer had to pursue legal action against the grant scheme in order to get the install removed and reinstalled properly. And then another customer who had a battery system installed and it was just never set up properly. The handover was never done correctly. And so again, the system underperformed and we had to come in and just make a few tweaks to the way that it was set up and get it working properly. We see this over and over again and it's an unfortunate plague with this particular industry. So let's talk about what particular corners I often see get cut and that'll help you to see the alarm bells ringing when you might get a quote. So the first corner that I see cut so often is when it comes to design. Very little thought and planning is put into the design of a system. For example, doing a shading analysis, that is an obligatory part of any MCS approved solar PV system. And it's important because if you don't do a proper shading analysis, you might miss out on things that are gonna significantly affect the performance of the system. For example, here behind me, there's a lot of trees around and there's a chimney which will shade the solar PV system at certain times of the day. And for that reason, we've gone through our design process, we've done a shading analysis, and we've created a chart showing the estimated shading impact on every array of the system. And it's led us to design the system with Tygo optimizers to help to mitigate the shading, as well as a certain type of solar panel, which is more shade resistant too. 
So many installers, when designing systems, do it really quickly and they don't put proper thought and attention into the design. And that is really the first and most fundamental element because at the end of the day, a system can be as well installed as you like, but if it's been designed poorly, it's never gonna perform well. The next area I see a lot of corners getting cut is when it comes to selecting the components, whether it be cheap, poor quality solar panels, poor quality inverters and battery systems. There are so many people out there in the market who offer really, really budget systems, which can result in a cheaper install, but not necessarily the performance that you're going to want, not necessarily the warranty support that you're gonna want and all of the other things that come with it, like a nice app and a system that's easy to use as a customer. So when it comes to product selection, there are two tips that I would offer to you. One is do your research, look out on the market to see what's out there and try to select a product yourself that you think will be a good fit for your needs as an end user. Then go to that manufacturer or do your research and find approved installers for that particular manufacturer then you know that the brand that you want to get installed has vetted and approved their installers. Those installers have been trained and you're more likely to get a good job done of that particular install. One of the biggest areas we find corners being cut is when it comes to installation methods. For example, and this is one that you should really look out for if you're getting a quote for solar, bird protection. Many installers will only put bird protection on as an additional extra a nice to have when in my opinion really it's a must have i've seen so many solar installs fitted without bird protection and customers are regretting it when hundreds of pigeons end up nesting underneath their panels but when it comes to bird protection there are different levels too for example a lot of installers just throw in this horrible kind of mesh stuff i've seen it really badly installed or even falling off the roof what we do is we fit this solar skirt and it's a beautiful, neat solution that stops the birds from getting in, but it also looks aesthetically pleasing. So it means that the array looks like it's meant to be on the roof rather than a less attractive mesh option, which just looks a little bit Heath Robinson in my opinion. But let me know in the comments what you think about bird protection in general. Now, if somebody's quoting you for a solar PV install and they haven't even mentioned bird protection, that'd be a massive red flag for me because ultimately you are going to get problems with pigeons nesting under. It's very rare to not have that issue if you've got a solar PV system installed without bird protection. That's just one example, but there are thousands of others when it comes to installation corners getting cut. So let's talk about some of the other components that we often see installed badly or chosen poorly. Roof flashings, this is an important one. Wherever there is a penetration through the roof to bring DC cables through, an appropriate roof flashing needs to be installed to stop water from penetrating the roof when it rains. Often installers don't fit correct roof flashings, they just run DC cables through a tile in the roof, which over time with vibration can wear away at the DC cable and cause arcing. Poor quality MC4 connectors being used, poor quality PV cables being used, roof hooks not being installed properly, the rails not being installed properly. We see warped panels often from the fixing systems not being correctly installed. AC and DC isolators, a very important part of the system that need to be selected and installed correctly. DC surge protection, which needs to be installed for a lot of systems if it's not built into the inverter. There are so many components to a system like this and if they're not installed correctly or the products are selected badly, it can really result in a system that fails earlier than it should, doesn't work properly or just looks downright ugly. Now a really important aspect that often gets forgotten about is aftercare. A system like this is designed to last 30 years usually, which means that you want your installer to be there for the lifetime of the system just in case you've got any technical issues, you've got questions, maybe you want to review the performance of the system over time. Sometimes these systems need firmware updates or a little bit of maintenance doing over the lifetime of the system to keep them working at top performance. They don't need much, but having an installer there to provide that aftercare service is really important for the lifetime of the system. But not just that, 
immediately after the job is done, there are certain important elements of aftercare, such as providing a handover to the customer, training them how to use the app, getting them set up on all of the various platforms they need to be able to control and monitor the system, showing them how it all works, the safety procedures, the shutdown procedure, giving a handover pack with all of the technical documents that the customer needs to be able to see how the system works and all of the warranty information, etc. That's a really important step this should happen right at the end of the job, but often gets missed when installers are cutting corners because they need to get out there quickly and move on to the next job. So we're going to go for a little drive now and see if I can show you what I'm talking about when it comes to dodgy solar installs, because I think there's quite a lot around when you drive around and you have a look. So let's see what we can discover. So already we've seen lack of maintenance, which I know I said they don't need much maintenance, but these systems that we've seen haven't been cleaned since they've been installed. They're absolutely encrusted in lichen and all sorts of nastiness. Cable management, that's a massive one. Seeing cables just slung off the edge of the roof or inflexible conduit. No bird protection whatsoever. There's a lot of red flags out there. So just from a five minute drive around the neighborhood, we've already spotted a ton of dodgy solar installs. But compare that to what a good solar install should look like and you'll see things like this. A nice neatly laid out array, correct borders around the edges of the panels, proper bird protection, stopping pigeons from getting in and making the system look nice and neat. No cables slung across the roof. The panels are being regularly cleaned so they're kept in good condition. All of these little things are the result of a top quality solar install followed by good aftercare. Now of course a lot of the points I've just raised are mainly aesthetic or system quality based but there's another thing to take into consideration and that is safety. Safety is such a key element because it affects you as the end user and homeowner but it can also affect the installers and that's something that not everyone takes into consideration when getting a quote. For example, I've seen installs where installers have worked off ladders very precariously to fit solar panels and that's just completely unacceptable from a safety point of view. Any good install should be done off proper scaffolding so that the installers, the roofers, anyone working on the project can work safely. And that protects you as a customer as well because there's all sorts of issues with liability potentially if somebody's working on your roof without correct safety gear and something bad was to happen. But when it comes to electrical safety, that's a whole nother can of worms. DC power from the roof, including the voltages that come from the DC cables from the solar panels can be quite dangerous. DC doesn't pass through zero like AC. So if you get a DC shock, you can't let go. It's very, very dangerous. And DC arcing can so easily cause fires because again, the arc just stays. In fact, I've done a test with this before. The arc just keeps going until something catches fire and forces those wires to separate. So from a fire safety point of view and from an electrical safety point of view, there are so many risks with poorly installed solar systems. So here's a couple of quick red flags to look out for with cheap solar installs. Number one, no scaffolding priced in or very, very cheap scaffolding priced in. I've seen people pricing in like 150 quid for scaffolding. And if they're doing that, it's probably not going to be correctly installed scaffolding. Scaffolding generally does cost quite a lot for it to be done properly by a properly insured contractor. And if an installer is saying that they're gonna install the scaffolding themselves, for example, unless they're a huge company that's got a separate scaffolding team, I would question that. Usually most good solar installs are gonna have a specialist contractor that they're gonna to use to install the scaffolding, certify it, make sure it's all done properly and safely. Number two is bird protection. If there's no bird protection on the quote, I would definitely run a mile. If they're adding it as an optional extra, but it's a very cheap optional extra, then I'd question the quality of the bird protection and how good it's gonna look. And definitely ask for them to include solar skirt in your quote, that will separate the men from the boys, so to speak, when it comes to the install, because a lot of installers don't even know what solar skirt is, but you'll see from our installs, it looks super nice. 
The third red flag is all about the design. What kind of design and proposal do they give you? It should include things like a shading analysis, for example, so they prove that they've taken into consideration the shading in the area where the array is to be installed. It should have specifics on the different products that are being offered, not just a generic wattage of solar panel, but what brand of solar panel is it? Is it an all black solar panel? Is it a bifacial solar panel? All of these little details help you to know exactly what you're going to get at the end of the deal. If it just says 400 watt solar panel or 450 watt solar panel, you've got to question the quality of the products that they're going to be offering because there are loads of cheap rubbish products out there that installers will often buy in bulk and try and sell at a really low price to do high volume, low margin installs and that's where you can end up in trouble. Now in contrast, there are installers out there who take pride in their work. They do a proper design and put a lot of time and effort into the design and quotation process. They do a fantastic quality install using good quality products and they give the aftercare that you need in order to look after the system for the lifetime. But for that, you will pay extra. It's not gonna be cheap, but it's going to last. And that's what you need with a solar PV system. It should give you energy independence. It should allow you to reliably generate a lot of your own energy, reduce your bills, reduce your reliance on the grid. And it should be a system that you don't have to worry about breaking down or going wrong in a short period of time. But worst case scenario, if there's anything that does go wrong with it, the installer should be there for a long time to be able to refer to to look after the system. You will pay more for that kind of install versus some of the rock bottom offers that are out there right now, but really you can't compare cheap versus expensive quotes as apples for apples. The products will be different, the install quality will be different, the design level will be different, and the aftercare will be different. It's a, a completely different kettle of fish between these cheap prices that you might see thrown around online versus the reality of a top quality solar install. You just can't compare. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been of value to you. If it has, it really helps if you give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content. We're gonna have two more videos showing up here that YouTube thinks you'll really enjoy. And if you'd like a quote from us, there'll be a link below where you can find out more.